Hey guys, welcome to your 15-1 notes. Today we're going to be talking about the geography and heritage of China. Let's get started. All right, so the official title of China is actually the People's Republic of China, or the PRC, and the type of government in China is a communist government. The capital city of China is Beijing, and China's overall population is about 1.4 billion people, which is about a fifth of the world's population. So to put that into perspective, that's like 20% of everybody on the entire earth lives in China. Uh, 50% of the people who live in China are farmers. That is what they do for a living. And the official language of China is Mandarin. So some of you are probably like, uh, isn't the official language of China Chinese? No. Okay, so there's different dialects of the Chinese language. Um, the, one of the most common of those is Mandarin, which is what their official language is. Mandarin Chinese. Another dialect is Cantonese, and it is also widely spoken in China. There are six main regions of China, and you're going to need to know all of them. You're going to need to know the characteristics of each of these regions, um, and you're going to need to know the differences between all of these regions. The first region we're going to talk about is North China. North China is located right here where the, the red is outlined. And North China has a generally warm climate, and it is a big wheat farming region. So wheat is a really important crop in China. It's used for things like noodles. Um, noodles is sort of a staple part of Chinese diet, and um, it's used in, you know, a lot of people cook it in China. So wheat is very important. Um, in this photo here, this is um, a gentleman making noodles by hand. So um, this is sort of an ancient method of making noodles. I know right now it just looks like he has this big stringy ball of dough, but he'll actually do these really crazy movements where he like twists it and slaps it onto the board, twists it and slaps it. And um, that is actually able to create single strands of noodles. If you're interested to see how that process works, I did add a video, um, which you can watch um, on your own time. Oops if you're curious about it. Okay, Oops, sorry about that. All right, so North China is also a manufacturing region, which means there's a lot of factories, okay? They make a lot of different things there. This shouldn't come as a surprise, right? A lot of the things that we have here in the United States, um, we get from China. A lot of things are made in China. Um, pictured here, we have a garment factory. Here is a textile factory. So that would be making things like um, rugs, for example. Um, the Foxconn iPhone factory is located in China, and this is where most iPhones are made. So if you have an iPhone, it probably came from the Foxconn iPhone factory in China. The capital city um, of China is Beijing, and it is located in North China. Here's a picture of uh, sort of the skyline of Beijing. They have some really beautiful architecture, some very unique buildings, like this one over here on the right-hand side of your screen. The Forbidden City is located in Beijing. Uh, the Forbidden City is where Chinese emperors once lived. So before China was a communist country like it is now, it was ruled by, by emperors. Um, the last emperor to rule China um, ruled... Uh, in 1911, and at that time, China switched its government style. So here's some pictures of the Forbidden City. Obviously a very grand place, because that's where the emperors would have lived. Another major city in North China is Shanghai. Um, Shanghai looks very European, and that's because it actually used to be um, controlled by the British. It was sort of a, a British-controlled area, so um, a lot of the architecture in Shanghai is European-inspired. So um, that's why it sort of looks like uh, some place in Europe, is because a lot of the buildings there were based off European architecture. All right, the second region of China is South China, which is located right here. And South China, oops, it'll move, has a generally hot climate. 
And it is a really important rice farming area. So you know from previous units that we've studied that um, rice needs a very warm environment to thrive in. South China has that, so there is a lot of rice that is harvested there. Um, other things are grown there, like various types of vegetables, cotton, and tea um, is also grown there. Um, tea is actually what you see these ladies harvesting right here. They're harvesting the tea leaves. So in case you were unaware of how that works, um, tea starts out like a plant like this, right? They harvest the leaves. Those leaves are dried and then ground up. And uh, if you've ever seen like a tea bag, just looks like those brown dried up sort of sprinkly things in there, that is just um, dried leaves, basically. That's all tea is. So farming is not mechanized in most parts of China. So in South China, where there is a lot of farming, um, most of it is done, you know, using animals or by hand. So we see this gentleman here plowing up a field using a water buffalo. Here we see again, they're in a rice paddy working up the ground using a water buffalo. Um, here, these guys are using this sort of, um, it's almost like a foot pedaled um, water wheel. So, lost my words for a second. So they're um, pedaling basically this little axle using their feet and um, this water wheel is spinning and that is helping to irrigate the rice paddy that you see behind them. And uh, obviously here's some, uh, here's a gentleman walking with um, some sort of harvested item and he's just slung it over his shoulder. So uh, the labor is very intensive. They're doing hard work. They're working long days. They're doing many things by hand. Um, it's not like here where we have some sort of machine to do basically anything we need to do when it comes to farming. Much of the farming in China is very labor intensive, hard work done by hand or with the assistance of animals. Um, the most important city in South China is the city of Hong Kong. And here's another picture of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a major shipping area, so there's lots of uh, ports around Hong Kong where, um, you know, these big barges filled with different things uh, for trading purposes will uh, ship in and out. Uh, also, just a little fun fact for you, South China is home to one of the world's most ferocious, bloodthirsty, dangerous, animals. Just kidding. Um, it's actually home to one of the cutest, cuddliest animals, the panda bear. Okay, that is where the panda bears reside is in South China. Here's another picture of the little panda bear guy. And most Chinese live in these two areas that we just talked about, the areas of North China and South China. So those two regions together make up what is known as the Chinese heartland. So this is where the majority of the Chinese population lives. Um, <clears throat> and you'll need to know about this geographic area, okay? So even though North China and South China are separate regions, they are somewhat connected. So just like when you hear about uh, people talk about the Ozarks, right? That is multiple states. Obviously, um, you know, there's different state borders, but even though there's different state borders, the Ozark still encompasses a bigger area. So it's the same kind of idea here. Even though North China and South China are separate regions, they are connected by this geographic area called the heartland, which, like I said, is where the majority of the population lives. All right, guys, um, I'm going to stop this video right here. And we will pick back up on part two of your 15-1 notes in the next video. See you there.